Today, we are highlighting class of 2024 point guard from Downers Grove North, Jack Stanton. Uh, one of the more recommended players when it comes to names that were thrown around for breakdowns to do. And Stanton, the last couple weeks, has been terrific for breakaway. Uh, shot around 45% on nearly 10 threes a game. And as you'll see, even in this game against Team Curry, those are not just catch and shoot spot threes. In fact, a lot of them are off the dribble, a lot of them are off motion. And to shoot that high of a percentage says enough about his shot making. But we're going to kind of look at all of the stuff that he brings. Uh, and just a little bit of background on the first time I saw Jack, uh, I was going to different fall leagues just to kind of check out, you know, kids in the area, primarily Chicago area. And I was out at the Get Better League uh, for Breakaway. And, you know, I walk in the gym there to check out some 2024s and 2023s at the time. Uh, and, you know, Coach Greg comes up to me just talking about different kids to look at. He says, you really got to take a look at Stanton. And at the time, I didn't really know, you know, too much about Jack. I had never talked to him before. Um, and, you know, he's like, you really got to take a look at him. He's one of the hardest workers that we have in the program. Now, to me, the one thing that I'm always looking for is the kids that really love the work and they love basketball to the point that you don't have to encourage them to do extra. So that obviously stood out to me, especially knowing some of the other kids in that program that had you know, been successful very early on uh, in college. So that stood out. And then the next thing he said was, he's also one of the best shooters that we have in the program. Now, again, that may not seem like a big deal, but if you've watched Breakaway's teams the last couple of years, there's usually rosters full of guys that can really shoot it. And at that point, you know, the 2022 class had players like Bobby Durkin, uh, 2023s had, you know, like Arias and Nick Polonowski. So you know, to be one of the better shooters in the program as a, you know, five foot ten, five eleven sophomore, I believe he was at the time. I think this was the beginning of uh, Jack's sophomore year before he had played any varsity basketball. Uh, that really said a lot to me. So, you know, obviously, if I hear that, I'm looking to watch to see if I really think he's about that uh, in the five on five settings. So, Usually it takes a couple minutes to see if a kid really has, you know, some game. It doesn't take too long, you know, just to see, okay, can this kid play or not? Uh, and I'm watching. It probably only took about four or five possessions. You know, first possession, I believe he backdoored right away. Just a really well-timed backdoor, got a layup. On the other end, loose ball. He's the first one to it. They get the ball back. They come down again. At this time, he's probably only about 140, 145 pounds, if I had to guess. You know, so not the biggest kid, but was kind of getting denied on the wing. So he walks his defender down, gets it into the center of his chest, pops out, gets the ball within scoring range. Right. That's really all that I needed to see because the catch and shoot I saw in the drill work. There wasn't a lot of shots that were hitting anything other than the net uh, and just the timing and the pace and the toughness. And he played at that age with the type of confidence that lets you know that he had put in work. And I think it's important to differentiate that before we get into this analysis. You know, I think a lot of times kids are confident because they have a lot of people around them telling them no matter what they do, they've done no wrong. You know, they're going to be successful just because they're trying hard. Then you have kids with confidence. And I think Jack is more in this latter group. They have confidence because they have prepared to the point and they have put in so much work that their expectation is that they're going to do the right things when it's needed. And sometimes you won't be able to see that difference until the lights are brightest, until you have late game situations, until the pressure's up, or in cases like this with Jack, you have a crowded uh, gym full of college coaches, and he looked the same as if there was nobody in the gym and he was just working out by himself. So, you know, that's kind of what I think separates him to this point. I view him as the top point guard in the 2024 class, and I think he has proven that over the last few weeks against great competition up in the UAA. Uh, but I think we're getting to the point now, you know, not just top point guard, but we're talking about one of the better guards and overall players in the class with what he brings in multiple layers. So we're going to check out this game against Team Curry. 
see right away from the jump, I really want to emphasize this, especially off the ball. When he gives the ball up or when he's starting possessions off the ball, the way he sets up cuts and the way that he moves and times up his spacing is crucial to the shots that he gets. You don't just get 10 three-point attempts a game. A lot of times you have to be able to create those with your movement and with what you can do off the dribble. So here we're going to see a backdoor. They're going to send that double team. So if we go back a little bit, let's watch Jack on that weak side after he makes that pass. So we see he's going to space here. It's a good job driving that open space. Good stunt and recover by uh, the Curry defender. Okay, so now we see timing-wise. On the weak side, if we go back a little bit, watch the timing of when he lifts up. As the ball is going away, he's lifting up to the top of the key, and he's meeting this pass when it comes. The big is going to help over. They're going to sink down. That means that there's going to be an advantage of two-on-one on this weak side. Now, for context, at this point, Curry had been switching most of their actions. This is the uh, kind of start of the third quarter. So he meets the pass. And I'm trying to figure out defensively what more you can really ask this defender to do. This is the elevation and the tough shot making that I think is going to make him a very effective scorer at the college level. It's off a catch, off a rip through, one hard dribble, he's getting up into his pull-up from three. And again, the 10 three-point attempts that he was taking on average a game, those were not just standstill threes. In fact, for the most part, they were shots like that. So there's a missed jump shot. They're getting the ball up. Jake Reamer's going to miss a layup. So Breakaway was playing without Jason Jackson, one of their you know better bigs. I would say in the class, probably one of the kids you look at and say, you know, in two, three years, you know, could really be one of the better bigs in the entire class. Uh, Jake Reamer stepped in, was terrific for them this weekend, running the floor, kind of giving good energy. Also goes to Downers Grove North. So you'll see, you know, throughout some of the stuff we're looking at, a solid two-man game as well. So a couple quick shots from Team Curry there. It's 34-33 breakaway at this point, just for context. So here we're going to see Stanton gives it up. So one thing I want to note about this is, you know, I wouldn't say I have uh, arguments about it with people, but I think a lot of people view Jack Stanton as a kind of undersized two guard. I'm pretty adamant on the fact that I really feel comfortable in his ability to be a point guard at the next level. So I think he is a division one point guard. Overall, he's a division one player, but in terms of handling the ball, being able to take pressure, being able to guard the position, being able to create separation and manage ball screens. I think he does all those things at a high level when you can shoot like he can off the bounce and in space. I would put him off the ball a lot too in situations like this, especially because they have a quality point guard in uh, Yusuf who can really uh, make some things happen. So here, this is a straight isolation. Everybody else, as you can notice, is on that weak side. That's a 19-foot kind of leaner off the dribble, one or two dribble pull-up. There's not a lot of guys at that point guard spot that are going to, going to be able to guard this. And this, I thought this uh, Team Curry defender actually did a solid job contesting things. You're not going to do much with that. I mean, that's a tough shot. That is a rhythm shot. They got that whole side cleared out, and that's a kid knowing how to go get a bucket. So let's really pay attention to the kind of defense as well because, you know, I don't think you can be considered a premier player, particularly a premier point guard, if you are not willing to guard the basketball with the same intensity that you look to score it. Here, Jack gets a little bit too over-aggressive, gets a hand down on that closeout, and they get a catch-and-shoot three. So, you know, this scenario, on this entry pass, you know, you can't turn your back to that guy in the corner. So I think he was looking to anticipate. He was trying to read eyes here. Got to leave uh, Jake Reamer on his own on that entry pass. Kind of stay locked here. Uh, hadn't really been shooting it a ton. This guy in the corner. But, again, get that hand down on the closeout, you know, with the size that he had. That was going to be an open catch-and-shoot three in that situation. 
Here, again, a small thing. See how quickly this ball gets popped up on the wing, right? One dribble. Out of my hands. Is he getting a layup off that? No. But you do that every possession. You do that consistently throughout a game. You're going to get open layups. You're going to get open threes. And you're going to wear out that defense. So here, isolation again. So at this point, we've already seen two tough jump shots in a matter of probably a minute and a half. That's a next level shot. If we look at the, and he's very good going right to left on his crossovers, it's quick. He's got natural speed, but there's a little bit of like a herky-jerky style with the way he handles the ball. His crossover is tight. It doesn't get ripped often, and he knows how to explode off of it into his jump shot. It's that nice hesitation again. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a kid who has, you can tell by the way he plays, he's worked on this shot. So this is a very difficult shot, I would say, for 98% of high school basketball players. Looks routine. And again, that's not even bad defense, but he, he did a nice job of attacking the angle he was given. Got the defender on his heels, got into a three. That's seven quick points uh, right off the bat there. Actually, eight with that uh, initial three as well. So they get the ball out, catch and shoot three. Again, this game did kind of, you know, in the second half had a couple stretches where it was really picking up pace-wise, uh, pretty quick possessions. All right, so let's talk stance. Like, we got to understand personnel, especially at this point guard spot. Personnel, understand what you're trying to do. And in every scenario, you need to be able to make the offensive player uncomfortable. And I think Stanton generally does a pretty good job of that. He's a little bit of a pest on the defensive end. Active hands. Likes to get involved uh, on the glass as well. See here, not much he has to really do. Pretty good individual defense. Would like to see a higher hand on the closeout. Now, scouting report-wise, this is a non-shooter. So, you know, it may be a scenario where I want him taking that shot. And we'll see. Uh, kind of throughout this time going under screens. You see here, that's a deep under on that. Wasn't really taking those jump shots, so that was kind of the game plan. It's not a bad shot contest. And now we're going to see them set something up. You know, this breakaway team does a really good job of executing on their sets. They get a ton of backdoors, a uh, ton of guys coming off flares and staggers. So here, so this is, if I'm a college coach, this is a play that I'm clipping and I'm looking to see how he responds to this because this is a college action. Enter it to the high post. You're going to get used of going through on a back door. Now we're going to work a two-man side here with uh, Reamer and Stanton. All right, going to fake the handoff. Here, come off. Solid defense. couple things to point out here, right? really want to emphasize movement, movement, movement off the basketball. He enters it here. I would say there's nothing wrong with him sprinting off of this handoff right away, but just watch how he sets up this cut to try to get an additional step. Hard step. And then it's a sprint off of this. Like I mentioned, he is straight line. He has straight line speed to beat guys. And then he sets that up perfectly to come off this second handoff. Then we get a solid screen. Here, what I would like to see if I was uh, Reamer in this case is I'd like to see Jake kind of roll to the rim here because you're going to have two on one and you got that switch that's a smaller guy. So hold him off. Go get that either short roll or try to get a little bit deeper, draw some help. You should have a little bit of weak side action. I think either Kincaid or May will be wide open on this side. But good idea to get it to him. It's a good extra pass. Then we got end of shot clock. And again, I just, just for context, right? We got the shot clock at the UAA. The 45% three-point shooting includes a lot of end of shot clock stuff too because by default, and this is how it will be in college too, you know, the, the better shot creators are going to get a lot of those touches. So that's a guy I want taking that shot when the clock's running down. 
All right, so go under that. He had already hit one, so that might be a guy you might want to get tighter on. But again, didn't take a ton from the outside there. Right, so we get a foul, skip ahead a little bit. Again, so we see Stanton off the ball here again. Very important skill you need to have is being able to play as a guard both on and off the basketball. I think from an academic perspective, I think Yusuf is the type of kid if I was a U Chicago um, or if even if I was a Wash U, I would really take a hard look at the way that he handles pressure, can guard all over the place, just a high energy point guard. And that gives Stanton the option to do actions like this so looping up to a stagger this is more set to get Kincaid the ball so another you know excellent shooter it's nice to have a backcourt with two two guys that can at any given point go for five plus threes that one's going to get blocked so now we're going to go to our base on out of bounds a box set now if I'm team Curry I'm thinking the ball's coming back to Stanton at this point he's got the majority of the points um, he's been the focal point again this is the third quarter so, again, I want you guys to watch how he sets this up to go get the basketball. So they're going to get it into Reamer. He knows he's coming to the wing, right? He could just have walked out to the wing and gotten the basketball. And maybe against Team Curry that works. Maybe throughout the high school season that works. As you start getting into better competition, if you can build these type of habits of setting up every single cut and being able to use deception in every part of the game, you're going to be a better player. So now he catches it. Again, this is going to be another nice, nice, really uh, based on out of bounds play here to get Stanton to shot off the curl. So we're going to see first guys come through here, and then we're going to get a flare screen. That's a really good pass. All right, I know he doesn't finish the layup, but. Again, I'm talking about playmaking, wanting to have a point guard that can do multiple things. It's a hard attack to close out. They're treating him like the shooter that he is. He drives. Look at the ability to draw attention. So, you know, sometimes it's called gravity. The way that you can draw eyes of different guys on the defense. He's got three eyes, sets of eyes on him. We're going to have kind of one guy out of the play. We'll have another one who's not really dropping. So having the ability to draw three sets of eyes on you, make that pass, that's a made layup, you know, 99 times out of 100 in that scenario. So I would consider that a quality possession, a quality look uh, right at the front of the rim. And again, that's created because of the shot ability. So they rush that closeout because he can shoot it. They overhelped because of his ability to finish at the rim and because of, you know, kind of the scoring that he'd been doing to this point. And then he showed. You know, he can make that extra pass if he needs to. So good job blowing up that handoff. Again, fairly spaced here. Don't really have anything going. They're going to try to get into one of their sets. Going to try to go a little bit of a horns look. Really good defense. Really good shot. Again, the couple shot makers on this Team Curry team that were making tough ones throughout the day. Uh, a lot of really talented West Coast players on this team. Nice little flare screen here. Again, Kincaid's another one of those shooters where you're okay with him taking a 25-footer because he makes such a high percentage of them, and it opens up everything for the entire offense. So here we're going to see subs, and we'll actually go to the fourth quarter after this. Uh, Stanton's going to come off. Again, really small thing, not a necessarily crucial you know, make-or-break uh, situation here. And I know there's been a lot of – you know, stuff posted on social media from coaches on this weekend from, you know, looking at body language and kind of what kids do off of the court. Let's watch how he comes off. So Jack's coming off. Everybody on the bench gets eye contact. Everybody on the bench gets a high five, and then he's right back to the bench. He's not sitting at the end of the bench. He's not, you know, taking an extended water break down there. Everybody gets a high five, right back engaged, watching my teammates here to cheer these guys on. That's what you like to see. Now, we're not going to obviously track him on the bench. Uh, going to actually go to 
the last two minutes of the game. So this point for context, six point game. Team Curry is up. They kind of, you know, floated between, you know, three to six points with their leads uh, late in the third into the fourth. So breakaways down six at this point. We got their uh, starting unit in for breakaway. Again, we got a box set here. Watch the movement. It's a very difficult shot. It's a difficult shot, but at the same time, one that you feel confident in him taking. And again, the speed to come off of this, off of this stagger, and then watch the read. He doesn't completely uh, kind of, you know, fade off of it. But as soon as his guy, who looked like he was about to set up in a top lock, he didn't actually have the ability to do that with the screen angles here. But look, his guy gets caught up in the screen. It looks more so like he was going to try to shoot the gap. Instead of curling that tight, he initially makes the read to try to, you know, fade that out to the corner, ends up catching it back. Again, the triple threat work and what I think oftentimes goes underappreciated is the footwork that is needed to actually get into the shot. So we'll watch it one more time. Solid first screen, tries to shoot the gap. He's going to come back to the ball. This is a quick ball fake back baseline. So a little bit of separation, and that's all he needs because he gets off the ground so well on that jump shot. Again, that is what was all game against Team Curry. That's what he's been showing the last two weeks. That's the type of scorer he is. Uh, off the ball, on the ball, he can make plays. That's the type of shot where if you're breakaway, you probably got to live with that. You know, that's... That's just, you know, a contested three a player who hadn't really taken a ton of them. So here we go. We got another set here. Dribbling it over. Now, if you could guess, this is a similar setup. If you notice the difference and, you know, if I was Tim Curry here, now you notice Stanton's in a different spot. At this point of the game, he's around 30 or so points. You should expect that action's coming back to him. But look how he's still selling it, right? Doesn't even set that screen because it's coming back right here to that open side. They're going to have to pop out on this switch. So full sprint. If you watch as he comes off this, he's getting low. He's getting his shoulder underneath. He's coming off this ready to shoot the ball if they're not getting a good hand on it. So shoulder to shoulder off this screen. He's getting low. This defender is going to have to force him out. That's actually a good job of extending out on that action to make sure that Stanton can get into a shot. So now we're going to see Jack's going to have a quick opportunity to isolate. Okay. So stop right here. Right now, I would like to see in this scenario, Jack just say, I'm getting to the elbow. I'm getting downhill to that right side. We see we got three help defenders on that weak side. We got an isolated guy in the corner. He drives this hard. He is very good shooting to his right hand, which most righties are not. But he can hit that stop and pop at the elbow, or he can get downhill, force this guy to step over. He's got a guy in the corner to kick to. Or if one of these guys steps over, he's either going to have counter weak side corner, or he'll probably have Reamer underneath for a dump off. So we'll see what occurs here. It's good defense. It's only one second left. I'm going to get the shot clock violation here. So, again, do I think, given the way that he attacked, that he should have made that pass? Yes. There wasn't a shot opportunity open. It was going to have to be a rush shot. But as he's coming off of this, and again, this is a matter of what have I been killing them with? So they haven't been able to stop him from getting separation to shoot his threes. So you know at this point... This defender is thinking, I can't give up a three right now. Knowing that, now watch how this left foot drops as soon as he starts getting into his action. He's getting ready to contest a pull-up jump shot. Right? Right here, attack that. He's basically dropped. He's giving you the right-hand drive. I'd like to see, see if he can beat this guy off the dribble. 
It's actually pretty good defense on the initial move. Now the problem is I would rather see a scenario where Jack is the one ending the possession, meaning he's either getting the shot or he's creating to the point where their overhelp will lead to a wide open shot. Here he's kind of got Yusuf in a tough spot on the catch. Now when he gets downhill, you know, he's kind of got to force something out of nothing there. So we still got a six-point game. Got about a minute left. You know, don't need to follow at this point. Just need to play solid defense. So we're going to see an isolation here, right? He's driving. It's a solid contest. So very small thing here. With where Jack's guy is at, right? This is not a NBA level shooter that's in this space. I'd like to see him drop right down and stay in this gap to the point where he's stunning out. He's got to kick it out. And now this guy's got to make a play. He's going to end up being forced into a tough shot. Reamer does a really good job one-on-one -on -one defensively there. And with a really good shot contest. So it won't affect it, but just to force out that more difficult pass, especially when the spacing is outside of shooting range. Now that, right, that's another scenario where you look at it. Okay, he's made the shot all game. This defender did a very, very good job of cutting that off. Here's where I would say just a small thing, and it's very easy now for us watching in the, you know, in kind of that future tense, looking back and saying, oh, well, you know, he should have done this. But that left side of the court, like, oh, my gosh, he could have attacked that left side. There's one, two, three. We got another guy in the corner. If he stays on that left hand, or even after he makes this initial move back right, if he stays on that left hand, he's going to be able to get whatever type of shot he wants to the left. Right? So even here, right? Go back a split second. When he makes that push cross back to that right hand, right here. If he can keep that dribble alive and he can attack back to that left hand, it's either a pull up, he can get a three, he can get all the way to the rim because this is probably going to be a foul or at least you know, an opportunity to get to the free throw line if he goes back left. You know, good job by the defender getting a hand on this. So I want to stop right here. This next possession and series of possessions to me is all that – if I was a college coach and I saw, you know, the majority of the game, this is a possession where if I'm an assistant and I'm going back to highlight him and try to, you know, pitch him to the head coach, right, this is a series of possessions that I want to show. Because a lot of kids in this scenario, after they just got their shot blocked and they're down by six points, they're putting their head down, they're not getting back on defense, they're going to let them get a layup, and they're just going to sulk and watch whatever happens, happens. Watch what happens right now with Jack on defense. Gets back, stops the ball. He takes it right to the chin. Right? And this ref's a little bit delayed with it. They're going to call the charge. That is... As, as much of a winning play as you can see, and again, what I mentioned at the beginning, some kids are confident for different reasons. I can't tell if you're a dog until you are in these situations and you're making plays like this on a consistent basis. Because the difference between the kids that are confident when things are easy and the ones who are going to help you win games in March is this right here. So again, shot gets blocked. It's a split second decision between hanging your head and getting back on defense. So not only does he get back on defense, he protects the front of the rim, right? Which you need to do. He goes over to help and then look at the quick reaction time and the presence of mind. So let's look at the feet too, right? Two feet outside the lane. So he, or outside the restricted area. So it will be a charge if they call it that way. He stops the basketball, forces the extra pass. And instead of trying to block the shot, right? You know, 6'2", probably not, you know, getting above the rim much. He puts his body on the line. He's going to take one right in the chest. In fact, I think he may actually got hit somewhere else uh, after this comes up. And, you know, obviously that's not a feeling anyone wants to have. But we're talking about a six-point game, and he's putting his body on the line. He's already done enough, right? Let's say he's got around 30 or so at this point. 
if he doesn't take a charge there, if he lets a guy get a layup, college coaches are not looking at him and saying, this kid is not competitive. But when you do that extra stuff, when you're willing to respond that way to getting your shot blocked, to not having things go the way you want them to go, and now you're making a winning play on that end, that stands out. And this sequence isn't over either. Right? So they clean up the floor, obviously. Now, one thing I want you to watch here, right? Six-point game. 43 seconds left. Stop. Go back again. He's getting face guarded at this point. Watch how quickly he sprints to the basketball to go get the ball. At this moment, the kids who are really killers like that want the basketball in their hands. They are not going to be denied the basketball. If you watch any level of basketball, when you can tell if somebody is really looking to make plays in the big moments, they don't shy away from it and they won't be denied that. So look here after the ball gets inbounded. He's going to come from kind of this right side on a full sprint to get the basketball to the point where the face guard's pretty much negated. All right. Six point game, still about 40 seconds left. High ball screen. You go under it, you get your hand off, that's a three right here. So we're talking about right now, right, he got the shot blocked, so we'll take that out of the way, right? He gets back, he takes away two points, he comes back, he hits a three. That's a five-point swing right there because instead of, you know, feeling sorry for himself, he makes a winning play and then he comes right back from the same spot that he just got his shot blocked, right? Different action. This is that little ghost action they like to run a lot to that left side. Miscommunication on the switch. This is a step inside the volleyball line, well within his range. Again, another one off the dribble. And that's a big time shot with the time and score. And that makes it a one possession game. Right? That is, to me, if I needed to make a clip of what you need to do to show a college coach that you're really about winning games. Those three plays would be it. And I know that first play was not a positive play. But I need to see if you are not having things go perfectly how you're going to respond. And right there, Jack just showed that he's going to make winning plays even if it's not perfect. So here, we'll skip across some of this. It's a little bit of kind of back and forth, catching up on their fouls. So eventually on this inbounds, right, the, the ball will get back to breakaway. So they're going to turn the ball over here. Obviously, they had used up some fouls within that time period. So the ball is back with breakaway. We have a three-point game. All right, three-point game, team is in the bonus. And this is probably the last, you know, thing we'll watch. So here... Not really much that you can do if you break away. Try to get up to the backboard. They're going to foul him. He's going to go to the free throw line. He's going to end up making these. So, you know, just going to be – it's a close loss. You know, Team Curry comes back and, you know, closes out the game. But, you know, I know that last, you know, five-point turnaround at the game where he took the charge after getting the shot blocked, hit the three. That's just one sequence. But that is something where it wouldn't matter if this was a packed gym. It wouldn't matter if it was an open gym, if this was a practice, if this was a workout, if this was a tournament that there is no college coaches at. I'm very confident that Jack would respond the same way in all of those scenarios. And I think to me, that's why college coaches felt so confident in giving him offers after these last couple of weeks. Because he earned it with showing plays like that, showing that he can shoot the basketball, showing that he can guard, and showing that he can be a primary decision maker when he needs to be. So to me, like I said, I feel very confident with, at this point, saying that he is among the best all-around kind of guards that there is in the class. Uh, definitely at the point guard spot, I think he has started to separate himself with just the straight grit. Uh, and again, I mentioned the word, it gets thrown around a lot. People cannot, I don't think as evaluators, we should be 
saying a kid is a dog unless we're confident that they are going to show that mentality all the time. And I think the one thing that I know you're going to get out of Jack Stanton is a kid who is constantly working, constantly communicating, constantly doing what is needed to help the team win. And in all of those things, he's willing to do it with a positive attitude. And there's not those wild swings that you see in a lot of young guards. Like it is business all the time. And I think that's why breakaway has been this successful so far in the UAA is in large part because of that guy kind of running the show. Uh, And I think in June, you're going to see a similar type of reaction. I think you're going to see a ton of mid majors, a lot more of the Ivies. I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of the Ivies offered him. You're going to see, I wouldn't be shocked if you saw some interest from some higher level programs either, because the shot making is different compared to a lot of high school guards. Uh, but wherever he ends up level wise in terms of whether it's mid major, you know, low major Ivy, whatever it is, I I think, you know, you're going to see a kid who is going to find a way to get on the court and above all else. And I think this is something that shouldn't go, uh, unmentioned a lot when it comes to any basketball analysis, basketball is really just a microcosm of life in general. And when you're willing to commit to a team you're willing to commit to yourself when it comes to this very evident weight room work that had been put in. There's evident speed and agility stuff, evident ball handling, all of that stuff that you see as kind of a on-court product is stuff that Jack Stanton had committed to, you know, years ago. So when you're that committed and you're willing to go the extra mile for those things, that's going to apply to whatever that next endeavor is for you in life. So I think one thing that players can take away in general, and this is not just in Jack's case, but those little things, that competitiveness in everything you do, that desire and that willingness to do what is necessary to be above and beyond what people ask, that's going to take you somewhere, whether you're going into business, medical field, tech, doesn't matter, right? go into any profession and you take that mentality and you will win in that space. Right. And that's what I think is really going to stand out about Jack kind of going forward.